kind. The silent herald of life and death, success or failure. The unseen force that measures man's destiny, reaching its most fateful moment as it slowly strikes the 11th hour. Rummy, Leo. It'll pass the time. Time? You don't think I've got much time left, do you, Warder? You think that in a few hours' time I'm going to take that last walk? Isn't that right? Well, now, Leo, oh, I... But you're all wrong. No, you're not going to hang Leo Gorman in the morning. Look, um, why don't you stop fooling yourself, Leo? I'm sure it'd help if you just resigned yourself to the uh, uh, situation. They're not going to hang me. My brother will get me out of this. Leo, you killed a policeman. There's no power on earth that'll save you from the gallows. Now let me call the priest and you'll find... No! Him. George won't let him hang me. He'll find a way. Clever fellow, George. He's got all the brains of the family. George will get me out of here. What's the time? Uh, two minutes past ten. Nine hours to go, eh? Well, that's plenty of time. George will think of something you'll see. Mm. What about that game of cards? Okay. Deal them up. Oh, cool, George, for Pete's sake, stop messing around with the hammer of that gun. Click, clack, click, clack, all the time. Drive anyone crazy. <laughs> a bit on edge, Will. Oh, this is the craziest scheme you ever cooked up, George. It'll never work, never in a million years. Yeah, listen to me, Will. I think of my kid brother locked in a cell. In less than nine hours' time, they're going to take him away to be hanged. At least that's what they think they're going to do. But I'm going to get Leo out of that place. And believe me, they're going to be glad to let him go. Any sign of that truck yet? No, the road's still clear. Yeah, maybe they're not coming. Maybe you made a mistake about the delivery day. Well, why would they want to deliver the stuff in the middle of the night? They work 24 hours a day at the atomic plant, that's why. Yeah. Well, I don't like messing around with that stuff anyway. It's in a special canister. It's perfectly harmless. Unless you take it out of the lead container. Oh, you're not going to get away with it, George. I've got a feeling that this whole scheme's going to blow up in our faces. It's got to work. You're not going to hang my kid brother, Will. I've always looked after him ever since the old folks died. Yes, I know. I've always taken care of him, always. He's dependent on me now. Will, I'll tell you why this scheme of mine's going to work. I'll tell you why. Because we're dealing with fear, Will. Fear. Got a nice ring to it, that word, isn't it? Uh, Put the fear of death into people and you you got them at your mercy. You can barter with them, no more than that. You can demand. And I'm going to demand Leo's life from them. Uh, sometimes I think you're crazy, both of you. You and that brother. Look, headlights. It's the truck. Okay. Now drive this jalopy across the road. George. George, it's not too late to back drive up. Drive this car across the road, Will. Okay, okay. All right, let's get out and take up our positions. Yeah, I know. <coughs> now, there won't be too much risk. The truck's never very well guarded. <laughs> Uh, they never take into account that anyone would want to steal radioactive material. Here they come. Hey, anyone there? Get that car off the road. Uh, look, 
Look, uh, driver, uh, uh, I'm in a spot of trouble here. It went into a skid across the road and uh, now the engine's stalled. I, I can't get it moving again. Well, I can't leave this trap. Maybe I can work my way around you. Anyway, I'll try to get help you for you from Bixton. You put your hand on that gear lever, driver. It's the last thing you'll ever do. I, I had it. It's an old up. What? Hold it, Harry. I got you well and truly covered. You're not going to get away with this. Do you know what we're carrying? Sure I do. You're carrying some radioactive material from the atomic pile to the research center, and I want that stuff. But it's no use to you. You can't sell it. <laughs> can't I? Might interest you to know I'm uh, going to use it to buy a man's life. Oh, come on, hurry it up, George. Come on, now, get out of there. Open the back of this truck. Don't do it, Len. If he doesn't, he's going to end up very dead. Then look at that. Len. Now shut him up, Will. Sorry to have to do this, mate. <coughs> Why, you rotten... Right. <coughs> George, you didn't have to shoot him. Couldn't help it. He grabbed my gun. No time to worry about that now, Will. Let's get that stuff. Oh. Come on now. All right. All right, now shine that torch in here. Yes, there it is, that container. Now grab it and take it over to the car. You didn't have to shoot him. Get that container over to the car. Inspector, it's no use my going to bed. I never sleep on the eve of an execution. Well, Governor, this is one time you need feel no sympathy for the condemned man. He's a vicious killer. If anyone deserves to die, he does. You feel very strongly about this, don't you, Inspector? He shot down a policeman in cold blood. Not only a policeman, but a personal friend of yours. Hmm? Sergeant Denton and I joined the force on the same day. He's a good officer. Fine officer. Better than most. Well, you've avenged him. You track down his killer, and in less than nine hours, Leo Gorman will pay the supreme penalty. Your job's finished, Inspector. Why don't you go home? I'll go home, sir. And the clock has finished striking the hour of seven tomorrow morning. As you wish. Excuse me a moment. There's always a lot of things to attend to this time. Hello, this is Governor speaking. Governor. George Gorman here. Pick up that extension, Inspector. Right. Leo's brother's on the line. Yes, Gorman, I'm listening. Yeah, well, don't miss a single word of what I'm going to say. Leo's not going to hang, do you hear? There's nothing that can stop the execution, Gorman. Oh, yes, there is, Governor. Just a little while ago, I hijacked a truck on the Bexton Road. It was a very special sort of truck. You see, it was carrying some radioactive material to the research station. Gorman. Now, I got that stuff now, Governor. Unless you release Leo before seven, I'm going to take it out of the lead container, and I'm going to dump the stuff somewhere where they'll never suspect it's hidden. And all the people passing are going to be subject to radioactive rays. Do I make myself clear? Gorman, listen. Now, you listen. I'm going to hide it in some public place. A place where a thousand people a day pass close by. And every one of those people will get a dose of the rays. And it'll take months to find out where it is. Now, you better think it over, Governor. Or I'll ring you back in a little while. Gorman. Gorman! You got it all, Inspector? Huh? Every word. What do we do? Hopeless to try and trace the call. Public phone box. The first thing to do is to check whether or not Gorman's bluffing. I don't think he is. It's just a sort of audacious trick he'd pull. The brothers are very close. Leo's going to die, Governor. Leo's got to die. Now, you will better keep this line to you open. In the meantime, I've got some phone calls to make. <laughs> And that 
gentlemen, very briefly, is how the Geiger counter works. The amount of radioactivity in the immediate vicinity is recorded on this dial, and there is that distinctive crackling sound. Professor, can you tell us something about the material stolen? Uh, just a brief outline, we have to hurry. Uh, certainly, Inspector. The report states that the substance stolen was cobalt-60. The active ray is extremely dangerous to human tissue. Primarily, they consist of gamma and betas. Gammas affect the deeper human organs. They penetrate deeply into and through the skin tissue. The beta rays concentrate mostly on the surface tissues. And it must be noted that they affect the eyes, causing blindness after a lapse of time. However, the cobalt-60 would have been dispatched in a lead container. Uh, this is a sketch of just such a container. The lead forms a barrier against the rays. And as long as it stays there, it is relatively harmless. Does that mean there'll be no reaction from a Geiger counter? In theory, that's so. But actually, you will get a fairly definite reading. I must stress the necessity for extreme caution, gentlemen. This is a dangerous substance you're dealing with. If Gorman does take the Cobalt 60 from its container and hides it in a public place, then it will be a long time before it can be detected. Unless the entire city is combed by Geiger counters, and in the meantime, many innocent people will be contaminated by the rays. I'm afraid so, Inspector. <coughs> Thank you, Professor Riddell. Now, I'm going to give this operation priority over everything else. The commissioners give me a completely free hand. The driver of the truck died before he could get into the hospital. The guard's still unconscious, but as soon as he comes to, he'll possibly be able to give us a description of the car Gorman used. In the meantime, there is one angle we can explore. Soon Gorman will ring the governor again. Now then, he's bound to use a public telephone booth. And the post office authorities have furnished me with details of every public telephone box in the city. Um, Inspector Muir, would you arrange to have every box under close surveillance? Have every man issued with a description of George Gorman? And anyone remotely answering that description who makes a call from a public phone booth should be apprehended. I'll get my men straight on to it, Inspector. Good. The flying squad detail is to stand by here, ready for immediate action. My men are waiting, Inspector. Post office technicians are ready to monitor any calls to the governor. They'll tell us immediately where the call's being made from. Uh, get the flying squad there at the double. <laughs> Use your phone. Go ahead and help yourself. Thanks. Come on, Will. I don't see why you couldn't have used a public box. I think we should keep out of sight. You know, the trouble with you, Will, is that you don't use the brains you were born with. Yes, yes, I know. The police will have thought that we were going to use a public booth. And I'll guarantee they've got men stationed at every single one. They can't cover every cafe that happens to have a phone box, can they? You got through it? Yeah. Yeah. Governor, it's Gorman here. I'm not a fool, Governor, and I know that you've got the line tapped, so I want your answer quickly, you understand? What's going to happen to Leo, huh? What are you going to do, Governor? Now, they head up. I want to get out of here before the police trace this call. Listen to me, Gorman. I cannot make decisions of this nature in such a short time. I'm going to give you just 30 seconds, Governor. And I'm going to hang up and get out of here. 30 seconds, Inspector. No, Gordon. Not enough time. Go 
on, Governor. What's the answer? Gorman. Keep him talking. Gorman, for a stay of execution, I have to contact the Home Secretary. I want Leo released. Otherwise, a lot of innocent people are going to get hurt. Now, what's your answer, Governor? Can't you ring me back later? Five, four, three... Gorman, listen. Two, one. All right, that's it. Governor, your conscience is going to trouble you for the rest of your life. Gorman. Gorman! He rang off, Inspector. Did you trace that far? Just a minute, Inspector. I haven't got time to spare. The Brabbit's Roadside Cafe, Templeton Road, Harley. A cafe? He didn't use a phone booth. Ring that address straight through to the flying squad. Have them cordon off the district. Right away, Inspector. I'll never get there in time. Gorman would have left that place smart. He'll be miles away by the time Favisham's men get there. Flying squad's on its way, Inspector. Good. He might ring again. No. Ah, oh, no, he wouldn't risk it. The only way we'd call him off now would be to release Leo, make it known that we've done it. By George, we're not going to do that. He's going to put the cobalt in some public place, take it from its container, and... Inspector, he'll expose himself to the radiation. It'll be as though he commits suicide. He's a dead man already, Governor. Because I'm not going to rest until I have George Gorman in a condemned cell. Governor here. Uh, the inspector there, sir. Oh, it's for you, Inspector. Hello? Hey, inspector, this is Grayson here at the hospital. The guard just came to. What did you get from him? Uh, there were two men involved, sir. From the description, it sounds as though the other fellow was Willis. He works in with Gorman sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? A dark green sedan parked across the street formed a barrier. What's his number? Well, he wasn't able to get it, Inspector. He said it was a fairly new sedan, though, maybe two or three years old. Uh, it would be. I'll stand by in case anything else comes through, sir. Yes, all right. Hello? This is the governor's office. Inspector Burton speaking. Put me through to Muir, will you? Hurry. Hello, Muir? Dark green sedan, no number. Two or three years old. Better stop every car in the city that answers that description. Yes, every one. Detail off the men with the Geiger counters for it. Is there any good, Inspector? Is there any chance of catching him before he dumps that cobalt? Yes, there's a chance, sir. There's a chance. Though with every moment that passes, it grows less and less. Ditch this car, Will. This is as good a place as any, right close to where I wanted to be, too. Now, come on. Let's get that container out. Oh, we're not going to lug that thing around now, are we, George? It's lead. It weighs a ton, and in any case... Come on. Let's get it out. Oh, now, look, you're not going to... through with it now, are you? I mean, well, you were only bluffing, weren't you, George? Not on your sweet life, I wasn't. They and Leo and a lot of other people died too, Will. Oh, you're crackers. You won't gain a darn thing. You remember what I what I told you about fear, Will? It's a terrific power. You make thousands of people tremble. You send a whole city into panic. George. George, I'm tied in with one murder already. But I'm not going to have anything to do with wholesale slaughter. Let's ditch the car and the container and light up. Well, you make one false move and I'll kill you. You understand that, Will? I'll shoot you down where you stand. Now, let's get that container out of the back. Well, come on, Will. And we'll not be able to carry that thing far. Far enough. Now, come on. <sighs> Inspector Muir's men reports finding an abandoned green sedan, sir. They went over it with the Geiger counter, and there was a very definite register. This is it. Get me a map of the city. Over there. Hurry. Uh, this one, sir? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Now, whereabouts did they find the car? 
Steerforth Street, sir. Uh, uh, just about there. Fairly suburb, eh? News, Inspector? All right, Sergeant. Have all units standing by. Uh, very good, sir. Fairly suburb. News? Uh, yes, yes, they found the car. Steerforth Street fairly. That means they've only ditched their car, surely. Uh, yes, Governor. And until such time as we receive a stolen car signal, they'll be on foot. They're carrying a lead container. It'll be down heavy. I doubt they'll want to lug it very far. So? It's my guess that Gorman's going to hide the cobalt very close to Steerforth Street. He's probably carrying it to the place he's chosen right at this very moment. Then the thing to do is to find a fairly public place in Fairlie. A logical place for him to hide the cobalt. Oh, there must be hundreds of places like that. Fairly is a pretty big suburb. Yeah, let's have a look at the map. Well, then there has to be somewhere that's deserted right now. Well, that yeah. rules out the railway station. And phone booths. He knows we're watching them, evidently. Where's well, the clear of them? The public library is out. Mm. So the other public buildings are all locked up. I suppose he could be thinking about forcing his way into... The... Wait a minute. What's this? Fairly sports ground. Well, you can't get inside there. The turnstiles will be locked. The turnstiles? You could slip a capsule of cobalt somewhere around a turnstile easy enough. And hundreds of people pass through a turnstile. Yes, that'll be it. Get me Muir. Hurry. Hello, Muir. Now listen carefully and act on this immediately. Call all units, have them converge on fairly sports ground. Now, this is something of a long shot, but it's a logical one. No sirens to be used. We don't want them to fly the coop if they're there. It's our guess that they'll be at one of the turnstiles. Yeah, turnstiles. Now, now one other thing, Muir. Who's the best pistol shot in the force? Who? Oh, Constable Duncan. Yes, okay. Get in there together with a large caliber target pistol. It's all right. Now, get moving. I'll follow on in my own car. This pistol shot, target pistol. Yes, I've got a feeling you're going to have to use Constable Duncan's skill before the night's out, Governor. I'll keep it up. Six o'clock. I hope he gets them in time. They're here. Over there by that turnstile. We've got them covered. Well, why don't you grab them? We'll see you in a moment, sir. You better have them out the truck, Gorman. It'll be easier on you to surrender. You make any sort of move and I'll take the lid off this container. And you'll all get the radiation. He'll do it, too. You see, Inspector, we make one move and he takes the lid off that container. And the radiation contaminates us all. He's bluffing. Oh, I don't think so, sir. He's a three-time loser, with a murder count hanging over him. If he doesn't die here, he'll die on the gallows. Yes, but surely if we rush him now... Look at the faces of our men, sir. They're taking it by and large. They're a pretty rugged bunch. But that's cold fear on their faces, Inspector. You see, they're dealing with something beyond their ken. Where's Constable Duncan? Uh, here, sir. Inspector Muir gave you that target pistol? I have it here, sir. A 32 caliber long barrel job. Hmm. Do you think you could hit Gorman from here? Yes, sir. I don't want him killed, Constable. I want him away from that container. Plus, if you could hit his arm or shoulder. I understand, sir. I'll try. Hand me that speaker. Gorman! Listen to me! You don't have a chance. It's best that you surrender now. None of you have a chance. Don't you know that? Well, if I lift the lid of this container, you have my brother released and let me go free and I shall open it. Understand? All right, Duncan. I want him. I can do no more. Whatever you do, don't miss. There's more at stake than a medallion this time.
That's a John Warder. Uh, won't be long now, Leo. Are you kidding? There isn't going to be an execution. George will get me out of this. If you can't give a bloke like George down, got all his buttons on, old George. Uh, want a cigarette? So what if I do? Yeah. Nice brand. Anything else you want, Leo? What's the time? We should hear something soon. Leo, um, you might as well face it, son. There'll be no reprieve. Ah, uh, so you know. George will give me a... It's seven o'clock, Leo. No. No, he can't be. George will give me out of this. Leo. Time to go. I'm afraid George didn't make it. the mounting drama of action and suspense when we again bring you The Eleventh Hour. Thank you.